sunny England. It is officially spring today. It's the 1st of March and there is sunshine, cherry blossoms and daffodils everywhere and there's children running around which is very very sweet. It's a Sunday. I've got a day off from work. I've got some nice um, spring outfits on and a little kimono jacket because my best mate from Australia who lives in Glasgow is coming down for the day. We are going to the V&A. We'll see the kimono exhibit, go have brunch and be the boring old things that we used to be in Sydney because we love our little Australian lifestyle. If there was a boost juice around here, we would be set. So I'm currently just waiting for her, but in the meantime, I get to wear some shades and enjoy the sunshine of my face. Love it! The kimono. Right, let's start from the beginning. I've always been interested in the kimono, from the history of it, the stunning fabrics, and the culture of what the geishas were wearing. The kimono has been a long-standing staple in Japanese culture, to the streetwear of Kyoto. That's actually Tokyo, my bad. Did you know that Tokyo is an anagram of Kyoto? Kyoto was the capital and then I moved to Tokyo. Oops, dyslexia getting in the way. My bad, let's go back to the video. And then to John Galliano, doing a whole Japanese-inspired season for Dior. It inspired me so much that I created a costume that was a mixture of Victorian and origami. <laughs> uh, Self-promotion. The kimono has also inspired costume designers in cinema. How nice is Padme Amidala's cosies in Star Wars? Like, come on. The kimono has been around for over a thousand years. When the West traded with Japan in the 19th century, they brought a whole new life to the history of the kimono especially now in the form of kimonos used every day from its 1970s vibes to festivals and then to me that likes to use a juxtaposition of multiple cultures by using sari fabric from Singapore to create well I have to say pretty fabulous kimonos if I do say so myself. This exhibit brings us into a world we thought we knew but we get to see so much more starting with kimonos from the 17th century that are in such amazing condition and how does it inspired so many designers. But what is a kimono? Well, let's get straight into that. The kimono means the thing to wear. It is a straight seamed garment using a single piece of fabric that was cut into seven pieces. The kimono, as I said before, has been around for over a thousand years. It has changed shape from round neck, tube-like sleeves, and then the sleeves growing in length with many new knots coming into fashion to hold their garment together. But from the 16th century, it stopped changing a lot, making it the iconic garment that we see today. It was the main garment for everyone from high class to peasantry in the fields, as well as being worn by all genders. We are lucky to see so many kimonos surviving from the 1600s. The V&A has showcased the best examples from the Edo period, which is the 17th to the 19th century. We can see the large array of expression of the wearer as each piece is unique. They use an incredible amount of varied fabrics from silk, crepe, linen and hemp. In rural areas, they would even create fabric using a loom. Sometimes these fabrics were dyed using traditional techniques like yuzhen or shidori. Many were accentuated with skilled embroidery techniques or hand painted. It is like the maker and the wearer had a great canvas to create the most stunning garments. One of my favorite parts of the exhibit was seeing the scrolls of kimono dress patterns. It's a costumer's dream. They had a wall dedicated to the deconstruction of kimono, giving us a clear example on how to create one. I look forward to learning how to make one now too. Amazingly, when cleaning a kimono, it was taken apart to watch each panel separately. Then once cleaned, the pieces would be re-sewn by hand. Some of these pieces could be up to 11 meters long. In my research, I discovered that the pattern of the kimono would change with the season, such as blossoms for spring, Japanese maple for autumn. One of my favorite things about the kimono is that it had multiple layers showcasing a minuscule fabric from each piece underneath. It was quite special to see a variety of kimonos worn by samurais. They are such striking characters that you could almost sense the warrior behind the robe. Before this, I never knew that samurais were the number one on the strict hierarchy in the Endo period. The samurai were both men and women. Did you know it really wasn't the higher classes that led the fashion trends of the kimono, but it was the merchants 
They were the ones raking in the peace and the demands for good. As their power grew, the need for new clothing to showcase their change was spread throughout the land. Towards the end of the Endo period, the fabric patterns began to change from grand motifs to scatter patterns in a smaller size. The pattern focus went towards the hem and the ends of the sleeve. Side note, do you think George Lucas named Obi-Wan Kenobi after the, the style of garment? As, you know, he really does wear a kimono in the film. Anyway, an Obi is a large sash worn around the waist of a kimono. They began small and then they became very, very large and they used to be made of extremely lavish materials, especially on women. The use of traditional Japanese paintings known as mukuhanga, sorry if that was wrong, these were printed onto wood blocks that allowed the fashion trends to go a further field, which was also great for us viewers as we get an insight to what and how the kimono was worn. I was blown away by a painting in an exhibit that portrays a parade Try saying that three times. Portraits of parade, portraits of parade, portraits of parade. Oh, it's not too bad. But a parade of courtesans in their latest kimonos. Famous courtesans were actually considered fashion icons. But then I saw this. This is truly iconic. Japan only allowed the Dutch to trade with them. They were beginning to trade with different fabrics with each other, which brought a new wave of kimonos. You began to see lots of stripes and checks in Japanese fashion, and in Dutch culture, they began to wear kimonos as loungewear at home, in the study reading letters, but of course, they were very European, using muted colors and fur lined. They began to realize that a kimono could be worn in Europe, so they commissioned makers in Japan to create adapted styles for the European market, such as warm, when it got cold on those winter nights, and rich colors that were unique. As the market grew, the traders began to go to India for them to create a new version using chintz fabric. In the mid 19th century, the wave of kimono came to the West when trade with Japan really kicked off. You began to see kimonos that were quilted with large bustles, kimonos using silks and day dresses. The passion for Japan even led to liberties in London stocking up with kimono fabrics. It was incredibly exciting to see this pairing of kimono and painting together. They are both stunning as separate pieces. One of my favorite pieces in the exhibit was a made to trade in Europe. It is an incredible blue silk dress from the late 19th century with embroidered wisteria. It was made in a way that the wearer that didn't understand how to tie an obi, for example, could create the same illusion, but with a European twist. At the beginning of the 20th century, you really saw a great juxtaposition of the kimono and Western fashion. In the 1920s and the 1930s, it really embraced the silhouette of the kimono, as the fashion silhouette was very simple. But the recreation of the kimono uses fantastic methods of fabric cutting, such as cut on the bias and the use of pleating. At the same time in Japan, the kimono was, to say, a bit more simple, with the use of block patterns and brightly coloured fabrics. Now it was mostly worn by women and it was able to be purchased at a more of a convenience than being made to measure for the person. In the last rooms of the exhibit, we are taken into a world that is so far from the beginning of our journey. It is more of a fashion expression or a costume. Sadly, after World War II, the wearer of the kimono dwindled and was replaced with the latest fashions from America. In these final moments of the exhibit, it is such an explosion of richness. So many colors, so many patterns and styles. It is almost like a sweet shop where your eyes are bigger than your stomach. They tell us this style of kimono is due to the street fashions that were happening. 
It is when the young would shop at vintage stores, giving new life to the kimono and the tradition that they never had experienced in their lifetime. And of course, each person making their vibe very unique. Look how Jean-Paul Gaultier has designed Madonna so fabulously. Bjork for that iconic photo from her album designed by Alexander McQueen. Designers using kimono fabric prints as inspiration to embellish a shoot. And of course, my bias favorite being the Japanese kimono origami inspiration of Dior. When I was in awe of what was around me, I will not lie, I lost my shit. There were costumes from Memoirs of a Geisha, but what made my jaw drop was seeing the original Obi-Wan Kenobi costume. Holy guacamole! I'm so sorry to my friend and the children around me from Star Wars Attack of the Clone with the Queen of Naboo's cosy. This exhibit has been curated to show how fashion flourished elsewhere in the world. The kimono is timeless and a traditional dress. This is a dynamic part of the Japanese dress and culture and how it has influenced global fashion. 